Hello again and welcome to Spotlight. Today we're going to be dealing with a bond issue here in uh, the village of Ludlow uh, on the High Street Infrastructure Improvement Bond. And my guest is Scott Murphy, the uh, Municipal Manager for Ludlow. Scott, welcome. Thanks, Mel. Now, first of all, what is the bond for? Um, just in general. Just okay. Well, generally speaking, it's to replace uh, existing water mains, sewer, and stormwater collection systems on High Street uh, between Thompson Ave and Depot Street. So it's okay. Now that was not included in the um, uh, see the last water uh, project that uh, the town had. I, I, it was well, we had four years ago. Uh, no, was not. Oh, okay. And why specifically uh, is, is it needed? Well, there's a, there's a couple reasons, um, probably several reasons, um, and I'll just bullet point those. Is, um, fire protection is, is one of the reasons, uh, and it's an old infrastructure system. Uh, and then inadequate collection of, uh, and access for our uh, wastewater uh, crew, and then the stormwater runoff issues up there. So those are really the main reasons uh, for that. Okay, now, um, obviously one of the things that everyone is interested in is how much is this going to cost? <laughs> That's always the, the key, key question, Ralph. Um, so the cost, the total cost of the whole project is $990,000, so just a hair under a million. Uh, that's broken out with the improvements of the water for about $310,000. Uh, sewer collection improvements at about 290,000. Uh, stormwater collection system 120,000. Uh, design permitting and other uh, contingencies uh, 200,000. Then a 10% uh, built-in contingency of about 72. So that adds up to about 990,000 dollars. Okay. Now this is all taking place in the village. Uh, now is this going to be a village or a, a, a shared? Uh, expense with, with the town. It's a village expense. Okay, so this will not affect any, uh, not have a direct impact on um, town taxes. That's correct. Okay. Uh, what would be the, uh, do you have a feel for the, just the net impact it's going to have on the village tax rate? Well, it's a, it's a minimal impact on the on the village tax rate because of um, you know the tax village tax village expenses are about five hundred sixty six thousand uh, this past year this current year, and uh, this is about a three point two percent increase about eighteen thousand nineteen thousand um, dollars so the key question I think that the, your viewers would be interested in is how much is it going to cost them out of their own pocket so um, for the water consumers it's going to be about uh, at, at or a little less than two dollars per billing cycle, meaning they get billed twice a year, so there's there's four dollars or less. Okay. And then on the sewer side, it's going to be at or around uh, three dollars. Uh, again, so that's twice a year, six dollars or less. So you're talking about effectively a ten dollar increase. Cup of coffee, right? At Dunkin' Donuts. I hope, I, I, I hope uh, just for my own personal sake, coffee hasn't gone up that much. <laughs> okay, now, what, uh, we, we know what the, why you're having the project and we know what it's for. Now, who's going to do it? Who's the contractor? And do you have just a general idea of the schedule? Um, we do. We don't know who the contractor is yet because we haven't gone out to bid. But we okay. do. We are working with the uh, water and sewer engineers, Aldrich and Elliott. Uh, they've just completed a big project for us in town, the wastewater treatment facility upgrade, which is actually just finishing up this week, which okay. is just slightly under a $3 million uh, project. So they're, they're very competent, one of the highest rated uh, companies in the state, and very uh, easy to work with. So they're the ones that are helping us prepare this bond vote right now, uh, and we're working with them. And then as far as the timeline goes, I think you asked me that in the second part of your question. Um, so the uh, bond vote itself is December 8th. Uh, the informational meeting is December 1st, the week before that. And we can cover that again in a minute if you want. 
but then uh, we would go to final design and permitting stage in January uh, 2021, uh, and then advertise for bids in February, uh, award the contract in April, uh, and begin construction in June uh, with the final completion of construction in August. So it's a fast track uh, project. Now, in other words, just be from uh, June to August, uh, it'd be a little over two months. We, we could be done by August if everything went well. Okay. Now, let's get into some of the details of this whole thing. Now, sure. First of all, uh, from just reading the literature that uh, you provided, uh, there appears to be a, a non-compliance issue uh, with some of the facilities that you currently exist. Uh, could you just explain what that uh, non-compliance is? <clears throat> sure. Well, um, that has to do with the water system. So this project involves, as you know, three different parts, water, uh, wastewater, and stormwater. So on the water side, um, and I'm going to read some of this here for you, the existing water main in the project area is an original four-inch ductile iron pipe. Uh, the pipe is undersized and, of course, it's reached the end of its usable life. Um, additionally, the pipe on both ends ties into existing 8-inch ducti ductile iron water mains on, on both ends of the section. So um, what that means is the 4-inch constricts it, um, and, and, and that leads to our next problem, which is your original question. Um, why, why we uh, have to replace this part of the system? So um, the, the water mains connect to the hydrants. And the fire hydrants, um, uh, according to the state, need a certain pressure, uh, amount of pressure, to be able to function properly. And these four-inch mains do not allow that to happen. So you may have seen some of the fire hydrants in town painted black. Um, and those are the ones that indicate to the firemen and firewomen um, that those, those fire hydrants uh, are being sourced by a four-inch main, and therefore might not have sufficient power in the, okay. in the fire. I have noticed it, but I, I, I didn't really think it had anything to do with the pressure. It does, and the state, the state has set standards that we need a minimum of eight inch uh, to create this uh, uh, amount of uh, water per minute uh, that they require for a fire hydrant. Um, and uh, they don't have enough funding available for towns to upgrade all their infrastructure, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, this here today is a good opportunity, we'll get into that when you talk about that in a few minutes, uh, and I'll explain why it's a, it's a good opportunity funding-wise for us. Okay. Now, uh, normally, uh, well, I think, the, I think the most people would be interested in would be, where does this project begin and where does it end in terms of where, where is it located uh, on High Street? Okay, so I think we have on the graphics, we have um, a set of actually three maps uh, where it's actually a connecting map and I'll just walk, walk you through that. Um, it starts near the intersection of the Catholic Church, um, Blessed Mary, um, the Annunciation Catholic Church by the intersection of Depot Street and High Street. Uh, and then you, you can see it moves up High Street uh, and that first, first page it shows the um, proposed sewer line and, and a, a small bit of the, the, waste, uh, the stormwater uh, line and then the water line which starts uh, towards the Catholic Church and runs up High Street. And the second uh, page uh, it shows the intersection of Union Street and, and High Street. Okay. Uh, we have a stormwater and issue over there that's been ongoing for years as the water comes off the cemetery and, and there's no place for it to go. Um, and it tends to run down Orchard Street and pool and pond and, and uh, settle down there. Um, and then further up the street, you'll see both, you'll see the stormwater and the water line, I mean the wastewater and the water line continue up to uh, the intersection of Thompson and High Street, uh, with the water line continuing just a few houses further along High Street. So that's basically the, uh, the scope of the project. Okay, now in terms of uh, just breaking it down into the water, uh, 
the situation itself. The main thing is to increase the uh, the diameter of the pipe carrying the uh, the water. That's right. So there's about a thousand, almost 1,100 linear feet of new eight-inch ductile iron water line that we'll be putting in. We'll be putting in new gate valves also, uh, replacing all the water services and curb stops, um, and then replacing two of the fire hydrants and the associated uh, branch connections with those. And then, of course, we repave and, and surface restoration. Okay, now uh, the sewers, uh, in terms of the, uh, the wastewater mm -hmm. uh, dis uh, disposal, uh, is that going to be for the same distance, uh, 1,100 feet? It's um, approximately the same distance, maybe slightly less. Okay. Um, 11, I mean, uh, 1,035 linear feet. Uh, but that's 8-inch PVC sewer line. Uh, we're going to replace uh, the existing sewer lines and construct and install approximately seven new precast concrete uh, manholes. Uh, and then again, pavement and restoration there. Um, there's currently no access along there for the wastewater crew to get in and see if there's a problem or a blockage or anything like that. So these added manholes will help increase the access points. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned the, uh, the water coming off the, uh, the cemetery uh, and the impact it has ponding f further down. What, uh, how is that going to be handled? Okay, so we're going to construct about uh, about 500 linear feet of this 18-inch storm drain pipe uh, and install approximately eight new precast concrete catch basins. Uh, and again, that involves the resurfacing after the fact. So um, I think on one of these uh, maps that we have for your viewers, it shows the green line. If it's in color on your screen, um, the green line is the stormwater uh, line that, that we're referring to right now. And you can see at the intersection, which is on the second, page, second graphic page, uh, that's the intersection of Orchard Street and High Street, um, you'll see where it, the green stormwater line will come down um, along the edge of High Street, cross over just before the intersection of Orchard Street, then run under Orchard Street and then underground out into the uh, uh, the Catholic Church field there, where it'll connect to the uh, the storm drain line. Okay. And now all all of this is going to involve uh, repavement of the uh, the road. Eh? I assume after all this work is done. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, are there any other uh, you know any other factors that are involved in this that you think? Uh, the viewer would be interested in learning about. So the reason why this project is being fast-tracked is because uh, we have an excellent, I'm going to call it a golden opportunity uh, that's being put out by the state. It has to do with the COVID situation, uh, the pandemic, uh, and the federal uh, government has given states a certain amount of funding um, for shovel-ready projects. And in order to become a shovel-ready project, we have to have the engineering in place, which we have preliminary en engineering in place already, but we have to have a bond vote already approved, too. And hence why we're having this bond vote in early December. But the reason why it's such a great opportunity for us, Ralph, is that um, because of the coronavirus funding, uh, the water, on the water side, up to 75% of the, uh, of, a, of the funding can be loan forgiveness, meaning a subsidy back to the community. Oh, and yeah, that, that, that is rather that's, cool. that's Yeah, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> um, on the sewer side, 50% uh, of the engineering costs can be subsidized and up to 40% of the construction costs. Um, so this is a golden opportunity for shovel-ready projects, and we're trying to become a shovel-ready project by going through this bond vote. That's an interesting expression. I never heard it before, but uh, I understand what what it means. Sure. You, yeah. you you are you essentially are prepared to begin the project almost immediately. That's correct. They have a long they have a, a list of um, of applicants, municipalities that have applied for this type of funding, and uh, currently we're on the accepted list on the on the um, drinking on the on the clean water side, which is sewer. Uh, and we're just outside the numbers on the drinking water side. 
but the projects that are in, a, in advance of us on this list, uh, our engineers, Aldrich and Elliott, feel that not all of them are going to get funded. They're not all going to be shovel ready. In which case, we would move up into their position and get funded. Okay. You've already indicated, you know, what the schedule is going to be, and I believe the, the really the thing that would interest the, uh, the viewers would be a construction uh, portion of mm -hmm. it. And that's going to be what, um, uh, June to August? June through August, right, okay. next summer. Yeah. Now, but the funding process of it, you've, you've alluded to uh, the, the forgiven costs. What, what about the, the unforgiven costs, if you pardon <laughs> okay. the expression? Yeah, sure. Um, let me just pull that up right here. So we could end up, if, if we are approved, uh, and this goes as it's um, projected to, and we receive those um, subsidies, um, we could end up with a hundred, uh, loan, two loan amounts of uh, one of 122500 uh, and, and the other one of 355400 That's for the uh, clean water and the drinking water aspect because there's two sources of funding here. So we have to go through the process of two hoops at the same time. But for this kind of uh, loan forgiveness, we're willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good, uh, it sounds like a wise thing to do. Sure. Now, you've already indicated what the impact would be on the, uh, uh, the water and sewer rates. It's about the combined, it would be what, $10 a year? Yes. And uh, when was the last time these rates were raised? Uh, uh, I've, been, just, I've been paying them, but I, I don't really remember. Um, the village trustees raised them last year, um, but they, it was, it was uh, not a large, substantial rate increase. Okay. Now, what would happen uh, uh, if this bond uh, were not approved? What would be the, Im the implication on the, uh, uh, the village? I mean, things would continue as they are. Um, the state's not shutting down uh, hydrants that are under, undersized. Uh, they continue to offer over the course of time when money's available certain grants and you, you know, get in the, the pipeline for those. Um, so, so nothing would change. I, I would say, though, that we looked at this project in um, 2016, and uh, as you quite imagine, uh, the cost back then was a little less. <laughs> and so the dollar value keeps going up for this. Okay. Now, by the way, just one thing to clarify. The, the vote on the, uh, the bond, is that going to be an Australian ballot or a town meeting? An Australian ballot, and that's because all bond votes have to be Australian ballot voted. Okay. Now, how would you summarize this whole issue, you know, so to the viewers, especially those living in the village? Sure. I mean, they're the, the, the users are the, are the payers. The users are the payers of the system and the bond. So I think this is a golden opportunity um, to access this type of funding that doesn't come along often. Uh, we're in a really good position with this project. Uh, to make this happen, and and if it does happen, uh, with the uh, with the financing benefits, uh, it'll be a, a a lot smaller impact on the on the taxpayer. Okay, well, just to repeat, uh, the information meeting uh, on this issue uh, it will be held at the uh, uh, the Hill Auditorium at Ludlow Town Hall on Tuesday, December first at uh, six o'clock. Right. And the bond vote will be held on Tuesday, December 8th, and that the voting will be, what, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m.? That's correct. And um, absentee ballots will be available. Oh, there will be absentee ballots? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just Good. notify the town clerk's office and you get one mailed to you. Okay. Now, if anyone, if anyone has any questions, uh, who would, would they contact you? Yes, and just call me at the town office, 802-228-2841. Uh, okay. Well, Scott, I want to thank you for bringing this up and uh, discussing this. And I, uh, I know people, particularly those who live in the village, are going to be very interested in learning more about this. And that's going to be a wrap for now, and we'll see you sometime in the future.